Hi, my name is Mary and I also go by the Healing Cave Lady and I have a super exciting video for you today. Me, this video is so important. Um, this basically is my Healing Cave Lady Roadmap to Health class. I turned it into kind of like an ebook and um, of course I have more information than what is printed and that's why I needed to turn it into a class. So cue the theme music. <laughs> I don't know why I felt like I had to do that, but I did. Map to Health class. I'm so excited that you're here today and that you are listening to this. There is probably a component, uh, a piece of the puzzle that could be missing for you, and that is why I compiled this roadmap. So um, I mentioned this roadmap in the past, and now I'm offering it as a free class. So because I feel like the information is so important, and I have to get to everybody so that anybody can figure out what's missing in their puzzle. Um, of their health because over the years of working with hundreds of clients many different issues across the spectrum of health I mean, I've had people with um, rare diseases Hashimoto's SIBO. I mean every kind of disease across the board um, Help them heal and the funny thing is is so many people concentrate on what they think they need to be concentrating on When really something's going on over here or over here and they're just missing pieces of the puzzle so uh, I started keeping track of what was causing issues as I would have testing done with my clients and I'd start hash marking. I'm like, oh my gosh, this person's not doing this and this person's not doing this and this person's not doing this. And I kind of figured out uh, what people needed for health in general. So it doesn't matter who you are, what is going on in your life. These are super important things that are needed for your health coming. So um, my roadmap looks like this. It's an adorable little roadmap email this to you. If you come see me in person, you get this laminated copy of the roadmap. And this is something that just reminds you of all the steps throughout the day that you need to take for good health. So um, I love having the laminated copy. I tell people, you know, put it on your fridge, put it in your on your bathroom mirror, put it somewhere where you see it. Important. So um, I have the roadmap here and we're going to talk about each stop. So every stop on the roadmap has a corresponding page to it that goes a little bit more in depth but today I'm gonna go and take it even more in depth for you why they're doing things they need to be educated and they need to be able to teach someone else and and know what your body needs and know what's missing on a day-to-day -day basis for you to have the good health that you want so let's get started so we are gonna start beginning your day it's it's called the start key and in my picture I'll just flash it across the screen it has a little church. Your day, according to science, scientific studies, your day should always start with positive affirmations, day planning. It's very, very, very important to start your brain off the right way. Research shows that fear on its own can trigger more than 1,400 known physical chemical responses that activate more than 30 different hormones in your body. So if you are dwelling or thinking about anything related to fear, um, related to doubt, those kind of things, they basically trigger brain that lets loose chemicals that affect hormones in your body. Not only that, actually uh, cause deterioration to organs in the body. They can be causing most of your issues that you have and you have no idea that they're actually stress, quote unquote, related. I don't think people realize that stress actually equals disease um, because there are physical toxins that are being let out and fear is the biggest one. So sitting around and worrying all the time, that's why I never watch the news, by the way. It's because they have cycles and cycles of fear going on and all you're doing is a stress response. That's all, why I also don't watch horror movies or things that are really intense and scary because those things are signaling a stress response in the body that is actually actively producing chemicals in the body that is messing with your hormones. So starting the day with your positive affirmation. Now your positive affirmation could be scripture, like a scripture of a day. If you have an app that gives you a scripture of the day, um, it could be something that you've designed for yourself. It's, it could be whatever you need for that day. Just saying that positive thing is taking your body in the right direction. About that positive affirmation and going back to it throughout the day. And having something like a vision board where you're looking at a goal and you have steps to reach that goal or something that you can add to your brain knows I need to attain that so it's very very important to start your day off like that um, and now research is showing that uh, pre-planning your day 
at night is even more beneficial. So we'll talk about that when we get into night, but we're talking about morning, visualization, day planning, vision board, positive affirmations, starting that day off, right? That's so, so important. Think about food and things like that so that you can be planning your day before you jump into the day and then you become a hamster in this wheel of, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing, what's supposed to get done, I don't have a to-do list. Um, if you want, you can go to healingcavelady.com and nutritional therapy scroll down to the bottom of the page the editable pdf that you can not only download but you can um, edit every single day you can type in like so every evening you can type in like what you want to do for the next day now we're going to move to stop one map the little picture to remind you and stop one is starting with hydration so it's very very important i'll talk about the nighttime part but in the morning when you get up to rehydrate. Um, your body is doing things at night. It's having all of these toxins that are dumped. There is a brain dump that happens. It's a lymphatic brain dump that happens every single night. Toxins are ready to get washed out. So if the first thing you do is consume something that takes your metabolism, uh, it kind of interferes with the cleansing of these toxins. So the first thing you should do when you get up, water lukewarm is actually the best so i always tell my clients to fill their water bottles in the evening before they go to bed so it's right there you can add a little apple cider vinegar and lemon to it um you can add just lemon to it alkalinizing is always always great metabolizing so apple cider vinegar and lemon are kind of the extent to it you can add a little stevia if you want to first thing you should do is have your water bottle i love these takia water bottles they're my absolute favorite because of the lids which is not on mine right now it's very easy to drink without spilling all over yourself they keep your water cold or warm or whatever and they're very very inexpensive at night and i tell people you know between 24 and 40 ounces of water i do not want to thin out your stomach acid so i don't want you just sitting and chugging this i want you to sip it um, for the first hour of your morning before breakfast. So I want this to happen before breakfast. If you want to chug a little bit, it's okay, but I don't want all of this just chugging and going into your stomach and you know, creating all the space and then you know, stretching out your stomach and thinning your stomach acid. Better flush out those toxins and rehydrate your body. So that's one of the most important things you can do. You want the bulk of your water in the morning and the evening so that your body can do processing that it needs to do. So just super, super important. I make it a goal to do this before I drink any tea or coffee. I don't drink coffee, but before any tea, it's so important, hydration, 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 hydration. The number one cause of most diseases is dehydration. So diseases, sicknesses, illnesses, dehydration, recirculating toxins in the body, um, breaks things down over time. If you don't have enough water in the body, your body's gonna be constantly recirculating toxins until they get lodged somewhere that is gonna cause serious, serious problems. So hydration is going to cure many things, uh, many diseases, many ailments, many issues with joints. And backloading your water in the morning and the evening, you're getting most of your water intake done for the day and all you have to do is sip water throughout the day. That's it. You don't have to look for like, I've got to drink my eight cups because you're drinking so much in the morning and so much in the evening. So water hydration, that is stop one on the healing roadmap. And it's a very important stop. Okay, so stop two. Stop two, um, and this is for people who have any kind of issues, um, any kind of autoimmune disease, any kind of health issues, consume a healthy paleo style diet okay so when most people think of paleo they think of meat 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 that is not what i'm talking about here i'm talking about three to four ounce portions of protein um, with each meal if you want protein in that meal if you want if you want meat in that meal but low starch vegetables um squashes uh greens collards um, all spectrums of colors, you know, peppers, all those kinds of things, um, but sticking to the lower starch ones because those lower starch ones don't feed the strep, the candida, that can tend to overgrow in the gut lining. And that's why I just say in general, it's better to stick with a low starchy vegetable, those kinds of things, because they are a long chain, yeast, uh, pathogenic, things and opportunistic things in the body and by removing those things you are just getting easy to digest fiber in the body and i also tell people to start with mainly cooked foods and a lot of people are like no we need the enzymes we don't want to cook the food we want to eat it raw 
raw cellulose, raw fiber is very, very, very hard to break down for anybody with any kind of gut distress or issues in the body. So by taking those um, vegetables and cooking them down, it makes it very, very easy for the body to break them down and use them for healthy fibers. It pushes things out, it moves things through. Uh, it works so much better. And then what you can do if you want those live enzymes is you juice. So um, you juice your greens, you, take, you can take a cucumber, you can take greens, you can take celery, juice all those things, and then you're getting the live enzymes, vitamins and minerals, and it's in your bloodstream in minutes instead of, you know, blending the heck out of your raw vegetables and in the Vitamix and it actually whipping all that air and destroying the enzymes and still having to deal with that raw fiber that is very, very hard to break down and you're still, most people still aren't getting the nutrients when they're doing it that way either. So I highly suggest, you know, the cooked veggies and then just doing the juicing to get those live enzymes and um, vitamin mineral rich water so that it's going into the body, into the cells at a very quick, way and if you are juicing anything that has a little bit of sugar in it it's a very very good trick there's two things you can do you can take a raw egg yolk and um pastured not pasteurized but pastured you know so from healthy birds um, and you can just whisk it slightly into your um, fresh juice and that will add some fat so it won't spike your blood sugar or you can add like a teaspoon or so of mct oil that will also keep the sugar from spiking as well so when i juice i don't use a lot of sugar i usually use cucumbers or uh, celery as a base so i'm not you know getting that rush of sugar if i want a little apple i'll just eat a little apple and actually take the peel off because the peel is real hard for me to break down if you are having three to four ounces of protein whether it be fish whether it be shrimp whether it be um, steak chicken anything like that you should have four times the amount of vegetables on your plate it's a lot you know and that's what's going to make you feel full you don't want to od on meats and proteins because they're very hard for your body to break down and to get all the way down to that amino acid form is is hard so it's better to do small quantities of meats and more veggies and then you can drink a juice with your meal if you want if you want those live enzymes calorie your meals are going to be fairly low calorie when you're just doing a little bit of a protein and um, the vegetables so you can add some really yummy fats you can play with oils you want to mix your omega profile so you could have like macadamia nut oil olive oil uh, avocado oil mix your oils i love that um, primal kitchen has amazing dressing and mayonnaises made out of really high quality avocado oil so if you're doing that a lot make sure you're adding olive oil macadamia nut oil hemp oil mix your oil so that you're getting different EFAs your body needs these essential fatty acids it breaks it down to a smaller level so that you can be used in your brain your heart your organs your skin and it doesn't matter if it's something the fat a carb, a protein, it breaks down to calories and your body needs different types of calories. So it needs its EFAs, it needs its amino acids. They all break down to different things. So it's really, really important to get healthy fats in your diet. This doesn't work for everybody, but I say a heavier later breakfast, eat breakfast until nine or 10, a heavier breakfast, a medium lunch and a light dinner. You want to make sure that your dinner is completely digested before you lay down and hit the pillow because your body has a lot to do at night and digestion is not one of them. And I will tell you, it's the number one cause of weight gain is eating too late. Five or 5.30, I do so much better than when I eat until six or seven. So for the most part, I say you can start at 7 p.m. Be like, okay, no more food tonight. Nothing that takes any kind of metabolizing, but then kind of get back to six if you can, and then you reach an intermittent fasting phase. So very, very important to keep dinner light. And I always say, if possible even, um, if you're going to do a protein for dinner, do fish or seafood. And if you can't tolerate seafood because you have a histamine response, then go without meat. You don't need meat with every meal. And there's plenty of products that you can get amino acids. You've got vital proteins, you've got beef gelatin, collagen peptides. There are ways of getting your aminos or your protein without actually eating meat. So it's a really great thing to keep dinner light and keep the protein light and to be like, to have that nice flat stomach feeling before bed is so, so important. And I know usually for people it's the opposite. They feel the most bloated at night. So one of the most important things you can do for your body is make sure you're done digesting before you hit the pillow. Consuming 20 to 60 grams of easy to digest 
amino acids a day. And now for everybody it's different. That's why I say 20 to 60. A scoop of like vital proteins, collagen, peptides, or eating a little bit of jello or drinking a bone broth. So eight ounces of bone broth has about nine grams of protein if it's made the traditional way. Um, so, you know, drinking some bone broth, those amino acids take almost no digestion almost none and a lot of those are the essential healing blocks that your gut lining needs um, especially things like gelatin and what is in bone broth is going to help kind of like patch and soothe things up and it's so readily available your body doesn't have to take a lot of energy to do it that helps the body heal quicker if you're in any kind of healing phase or even if you're not in a healing phase it's just a really good thing to make sure you're patching up the gut lining to um, keep the integrity of the the wall so or leaky gut problem. So that would be stop two. That's that paleo style diet. Nuts and seeds, um, not all of them, but some of them have something called phytic acid in them or phytates. And basically what it is is an enzyme inhibitor so that your body can't have the enzymes that it needs to break down foods to a cellular level and use them. So it's basically an anti-nutrient. So things like almonds, pecans, uh, anything kind of like with that darker shell, not macadamia nuts, not cashews, cashews aren't even nuts. Um, the darker hazelnuts, they have something called phytates on them and you soak them, you rinse them, you re-dehydrate them or you buy them sprouted. Um, same with seeds, uh, you know, pumpkin seeds, all the different kinds of seeds just when they are sprouted and I'm sure I'll do a video on it at some point. So, stop three. Intermittent fasting. I know it's like a buzzword out there. I've talked about intermittent fasting forever. Why? Because intermittent fasting is basically just thing basically is cutting off the amount of time that you're eating from 12 to 16 hours. So you're giving yourself a window uh, of eating and then you're not eating for the rest of the time because in that amount of time when your body is not metabolizing food, it's actually able to heal at a cellular, even a gene level where you're healing your own DNA. So uh, when you stop eating, say you're gonna have a window of 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. to eat and then that's it. So the rest of the time, your body's able to go into a place where it's healing, it's restoring, it's doing things that it needs to do. A lot of intermittent fasting, and I have noticed amazing benefits for my autoimmune disease, for weight loss, for just staying fit and healthy and feeling good. So uh, I love intermittent fasting. Some people will have liquid days. They'll be like, I have liquid Mondays, where they drink all liquids on Mondays. Uh, so. I know there's different types of fasting and I know all these people have different rules and I feel like personally if you're doing a liquid Monday and you want to drink bone broth all day and you want to drink tea green tea and you want to drink um, tons of water and apple cider vinegar water that's totally okay if you're metabolizing under 600 calories technically you are fasting it's a different type of fast but you are fasting and your body is still reaping benefits so you still want to cut yourself off from anything that has to be metabolized at 6 p.m so if you're drinking the bone broth all day long or you're drinking green juice all day long you still want to cut yourself at 6 6 p.m and then switch to just water um, but there are huge 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 benefits and let me just tell you if your gut needs a break let me just tell you it's gonna be so happy if you just do this type of fasting so super super important to do that so break into it slowly you could start by just being like okay i'm just gonna start ending my eating day early and start my eating day late the next day i just make it a slow transition so that you don't like totally deplete yourself and then you end up messing up big time like oh i'm so good i stopped eating at 5 p.m and then right before bed you're like i'm starving it's 10 o'clock and you're loading stuff in your mouth and then you're doing real damage so you know it's something when you, you want to work into talk to your physician talk to your naturopath and figure out what what kind of schedule you can get on for that to work for you but it's very important to slowly work that into your lifestyle we're moving on to step four is supporting your digestive system now okay most people might think this is a conspiracy theory because so many of the people that come into my office for testing are deficient in either HC, HCL, which is hydrochloric acid, and or digestive enzymes. Like I'm telling you, like 90% of the people that come in. And the biggest reason is because we're not allowing our brain to create them. You know, we don't sit down to eat. We're always crazy. We're always in fight or flight mode. Guess what? You don't digest anything in fight or flight mode. It goes, whoop. your body's like. A, a tiger could come up any given moment 
and I cannot waste any time or energy digesting this right now. It's like, it can't. So what happens is your body becomes depleted in these things and food comes down and it either gets to your stomach and it's like, what? There's not enough stomach acid here. And your brain's like, crap, I gotta create more stomach acid. And then you get it coming up your throat and you're like, oh my gosh, I have too much acid. I need to take antacids and you take antacids. And then your body's like, oh crap, now I have even less stomach acid. And then you get the food down there and it's coming up and then you end up throwing up and you're throwing up acid and you're throwing up food. And how many of you have gone through this in life? And you're like, oh my gosh, I'm taking antacids, but I don't have enough stomach acid and food's coming back up and acid's coming back up. And it's just like a horrible cycle. And it usually is because you don't have enough hydrochloric acid. And it's usually because when you sit down to eat, if you sit down at all, your body's not like, oh, I'm relaxed. I'm gonna eat food right now. Mm, sounds good. I'm gonna salivate. And um, studies have shown that sitting down and praying for your meal play a different state to where it's like, yes, I can digest right now. So by sitting down and praying, saying, Jesus, thank you for this food, help it to nourish my body. I know it sounds like, how could this make this big difference? But it's changing your brain to say, hey, I'm gonna eat. And not only that, I'm going to break it down to a level where I can use it. I personally like look at food and I'm like, oh, that's gonna do this. And that's gonna do this in my body. And I sal salivate all the time, I'm like, oh, that sounds so good. It's going to do all those great things. And it's like, and my body is going to break down that food and use it. So it's really, really important to bring yourself into a digestive mode. If you, you know, aren't praying, um, there's other ways that you can do it. Uh, so you can activate your peripheral, peripheral vision. I can't say it. peripheral vision. You can hold your fingers out to the side and look forward and try to see them wiggling without looking over at them. That takes you out of fight or flight mode. Fight or flight mode is your like, you're looking like laser straight, your eyes are dilated, you know, it's like anything could come out at any given moment, I need to be on. Going like this, wiggling your fingers and trying to look at them without looking at them. You yeah, know, see, see them, yeah, try it, try it right now. Okay, I might sit here and rest. I might possibly eat something. I might be able to produce some enzymes and some HCL. Your body should look at broccoli and say, I need cellulase, I need this, I need this. All these things are gonna come down. All these enzymes are gonna get created so it can break it down. So in the meantime, if you are not in that state and you're working on it, I highly, highly suggest taking HCL and or digestive enzymes. For me, I like to take HCL in the morning to get like my stomach juices going, and then I'll take a digestive enzyme before meals. Sometimes I'll just kind of feel, I'll be like, hmm. I feel like I wanna take an HCL all day long before meals. And I'll just carry like the little bottles in my purse and I'll pop one. And it can be with your first bite or it could be like halfway through, you're like, oh crap, I didn't take a digestive enzyme, pop it in. It is one of the most noticeable changes in me and my clients. It's like one of those things they're like, oh my gosh, my life has changed now that I take these. Like it's a serious, serious change because we just have that problem, you know? getting out of fight or flight mode and you know getting into a digestive mode and sometimes it needs help and it's sometimes just nice to have extra help 50 to 60 percent of your body's energy goes towards digesting food i mean and if you're not digesting food if you're not doing a good job doing it then your energy can be used towards other things so it's really really important to support your digestion however you can whether it's taking the time to pray whether it's taking time to, to activate your peripheral vision, what, whether it's sitting down and really salivating and thinking about the, what the food's gonna do for your body. Super, super important. Um, another thing that's super important is um, I love incorporating apple cider vinegar and, and things like that because it actually creates that sour taste, actually creates, tells the brain to produce more stomach acid, but it also is full of acid resistant probiotics that further break down food um, and help it get into the cells. Um, but also taking a probiotic, a really good probiotic and even rotating the strains of probiotics are really, really important for the gut and helping it aid in digestion and things like that. Drinking too much water around meals. I know so many people, they don't drink all day long and then the meal comes along and they're sitting there. So they're just drinking water, drinking water, drinking water. That will thin your stomach acid to the point where food gets pushed through undigested. It gets drugged through the intestinal tract and further creates leaky gut, masturbates things like diverticulitis, diverticulosis, SIBO, and things like that because you are pushing food down this undigested and it's gonna be full of all kinds of bacteria and problems and feed parasites and things like that. So it's very, very important not to drink too much water with your meals. You just wanna sip. 
during meals. And if you're sipping anything during meals, it could be ACV water. I know it might not taste good with your food, but it's actually going to help in the digestive process. But you know, drinking, just sipping water with your meals. I need trigger. Just sipping water with your meals. Do not sit and drink eight glasses of water. <laughs> I don't know why I said Olive Garden. But people, you know, they go out to restaurants, they just drink tons of water. They're like, I haven't drank water all day. It's so healthy. I'm so glad I'm drinking all this water. It's very, very bad. Also consider making your own sauerkraut brine. Um, like I said, fermented foods um, are really, really good for you, but so many people cannot handle actual sauerkraut. It's very, very hard to break down. Also supplement any vitamin deficiencies. Uh, a lot of people don't know in general what is just important to take uh, that our body doesn't create itself and or get tested. Like if you come for me for a vitamin deficiency testing, we can see exactly what you're deficient in. For most people, it's omegas because they're not eating enough fishes. D vitamins, um, even if you're getting a lot of sun, some people still aren't getting those D vitamins because maybe they're using too much sunblock or wearing hats or sunglasses and their body cannot create the vitamin D. Things like B vitamins that people are still deficient in. So a lot of people need to take the B vitamins, uh, B complex, take D3, K2 because you should take those together and take things like omegas to help with their bones, their joints, women things. I love women to be on some kind of EFA, the company called um, Health From The Sun that makes a vegan 369. And that one's flaxseed, evening primrose, and borage. And I love that blend for women. It is absolutely amazing. It helps with joints, it helps with all kinds of things. It helps with skin, it helps balance hormones. It's fantastic. It's a really, really great oil. Um, and it's one of the only companies that I found that makes that Borage, flax, and evening primrose. Start getting a vitamin deficiency scan, which of course you can get done with me. Know what you need to supplement in your diet. So that would be stop four. Good one. It is probably one of the biggest missing links, aside from digestion. When people come in and I do testing, it's lymphatic drainage issues. How many times have you heard that if you've been in my office before? Lymphatic drainage, lymphatic drainage, oh. You have lymphatic drainage issues in your stomach. You have lymphatic drainage issues here. You have lymphatic drainage issues. Your body is recirculating toxins and causing all the problems. Lymphatic drainage, there's this pump in your body and it's a one-way pump and your body moves it. It's your responsibility to get this pump flowing. It doesn't move like your heart. You know, your heart involuntarily pumps. It takes care of itself. This pump has to be activated. So um, there is a whole page on what to do for your lymphatic drainage. So my personal favorites for lymphatic drainage, the most effective things on the planet are running and hot yoga. Um, deep breathing activates the lymphatic system, but the movement of yoga actually facilitates the pump flow. Sweating gets it going because sweating gets things moving on the surface level. And once those things are drained out, the lymphatic system can really kind of take over that bounce in your body gets that lymphatic pump working like a machine. And I know so many people are like, okay, I don't have the endurance to run. I don't, you know, my knees, my this, my that, you can work up to it. But I even tell people, try one mile. Even if it's a 10 minute mile, just work on getting those legs high. You do not have to go fast. You just need the bounce. You can jump rope, jump rope, jump rope, jump rope, anything where you're bouncing. You don't have to be jumping high. The bouncing is what creates it. But I feel like the small amount of smacking is a little bit better than using a rebounder. But the rebounder is amazing too. So a rebounder is a small trampoline. You guys have seen in my past lymphatic video. I had a Bellicon, I do have a Bellicon. This is my Bellicon rebounder that I jump on for lymphatic workouts and then doing a power plate. If you have a power plate or a vibrating plate, either at home or in the gym, um, you can do it on plank. You can stand up on it for a vibration. Jump rope is amazing, any kind of jump roping, but I love jump roping with these battle ropes. It gives you a really, really good um, lymphatic blast, box jumps, things like that, all things you can do at the gym too. I have a big trampoline in my backyard now that me and my kids jump on as well. Um, that's great. It gets things moving up and down, activates that lymphatic system. It is absolutely amazing. You want these toxins flowing out of the body. Do you know how many of you are carrying three to five pounds of toxic storage in your body that just need to be depleted with lymphatic drainage? Like it just makes you feel fluffy and kind of overweight and yucky and it just squeezes right out of your body it just like wrings it out so i lymphatic drainage on a daily basis i tell people 
take turns with the different things. So dry brushing towards the heart, you can have that dry brush. Watch my lymphatic drainage video too, but brush toward the heart. Hot and cold showers alternating. It shocks your lymphatic system and gets it going. So taking 90 second hot, 90 second cold, 90 second hot, 90 second cold. I have a steam shower, so I'll get the steam going in there get it real hot, like 110 degrees, and then take an ice cold shower or hop in an ice bath and then hop back in. And you always end on cold, even though it doesn't feel as lovely, but you always end on cold. Um, vibrating on a power plate uh, or a vibrating machine or anything that vibrates, putting your feet up on a vibrating thing. I have a vibrating massager. This is my vibrating massager that I got. Um, I bought it, I think at Costco on a road show, but they sell them on Amazon for similar price. It has different levels of vibrating and you can prop it up on the couch so that you're vibrating more on an even level. So um, if I were to prop this up on the couch, I'm gonna get better vibration through my whole entire body. So um, that's what I like to do, but I also just like to vibrate like this. You can flip it backwards and put it behind your shins. Um, for an even better lymphatic drainage, like if you get, um, you know, maybe you travel and you carry a lot more um, uh, lymphatic toxins in here and you need the portals activated behind your knee knees, you can lay it here. And um, doing this for, I think it's 15 minutes is the equivalent of walking four miles. Like it's amazing and I love this thing. I use it all the time and it's right around 230 bucks or so that I absolutely love that you can put your feet up on, on on a couch and just like have your lymphatic system fully activated, lymphatic massage done, and there's lymphatic self massage that you can do on neck, um, lymphatic massages, anything that shakes, room, um, hot Epsom baths until you're sweating, and then make sure you shower after. So, but you don't wanna be in that hot Epsom bath longer than about 10, 12 minutes. You want it to be sweating. You do not want that water to get cold again and to reabsorb toxins. So you get out and shower off. Wearing loose fitting clothing is a really good idea because uh, anytime you're not wearing loose fitting clothing, your body can't shake the way that it needs to and move the way that it needs to and it kind of binds in toxins, toxins to be released back into the skin. That's why people have a lot of issues with rashes on their on their body and on their faces. Um, cryotherapy is great. Um, that's those cold chambers and if you follow me on Instagram, you watch me do that all the time. Um, that's where you go into a chamber with the nitrogen and you know it freezes you goes negative 200 degrees for two to three minutes um rebounder is great also make sure you're wearing a loose fitting bra because um your pump is under your left armpit it's a place where often women get breast cancer is under this left lymphatic portal so if you're wearing bras that are too tight i wear very very light sports bras when i wear them i mean they really do almost nothing pinch under the armpit just for that reason i want the toxins to flow out the way they're supposed to and that portal is right here under the left armpit so you want to make sure that you're not wearing anything that's cutting off the circulation there because if you're doing all this lymphatic drainage and you're jumping and you're running and you're doing all these things and then you're wearing two sports bras that are going to block the flow it's gonna get recirculated right under the breast, and that's like breast cancer, just waiting. You don't want that. You don't want any toxins recirculating in an area or stagnant there, and that's why I don't do aluminum deodorant either. Talk about blocking in um, toxins. That will lock your toxins in for sure. It'll also, your body will absorb that aluminum. So yeah, try to wear looser clothing, things that aren't super, super, super tight when you're doing these things. And of course with yoga, you have to wear things a little bit tighter, but just be mindful of it. You don't want it to be so tight. So one of the most important stops by far aside from hydration is lymphatic drainage lymphatic drainage every single day pick different things have a check off list like i said i have on my website i have that daily sheet and you can have like every day what are you going to be your lymphatic drainage things go boom 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 i want at least three things every single day whether it's simple dry brushing whether it's hot and cold shower whether it's run or hot yoga I want you jumping bouncing moving and keeping that body constantly being wrung out so that you don't have toxins recirculating in the body causing all of your issues I'm telling you so so important I, it's the number one cause of disease i'm telling you is not getting lymphatic drainage it's the number one cause of disease aside from dehydration because you have to facilitate hydration for lymphatic drainage to work i'm going to say it again you have to facilitate hydration for lymphatic drainage to work if you are doing all the lymphatic drainage and you're not drinking your water, 
you are gonna have a problem because you're not facilitating enough hydration for your body to get those toxins out of the body. Whether it's stress toxins, whether it's toxins that's coming in your mouth, whether it's things you're being exposed to, you have to get it out of the body, okay? So, step six, so important. <laughs> Don't eat three hours prior to bed. Don't do it. Don't do it. So if your bedtime is 10 p.m., don't eat past seven. Take it a step further and go an hour even safer. You know, I like to go to bed between 9.30 and 10, but sometimes it's 11, but I'm not gonna eat at eight. I'm gonna stop eating at six. So the earlier the better, but I would make a hard stop rule. Like I'm not doing this. This body needs to do things. This body has stuff to do. I cannot go to bed with food on my stomach. It will rot, it will feed parasites, it will feed candida, it will feed everything that is ravenous in the body. Don't do it. Just say no, you will get used to it and it will become easy. It is very, very hard the first week. I'm not gonna lie. You're gonna be like, mm, mm, but you'll realize it's not because you're hungry. It's a habit, it's a routine that you have to break. It's an unhealthy habit and it's routine. There's no reason you need to eat before bed. There's no reason your kids need to eat before bed. There's no reason, no reason, no reason, no reason. Don't do it. Okay, so put a hard stop. Be like, I'm not doing this. This can be on the fridge. You can be like, kids, sorry. The healing cave lady says, don't do it. So we don't do it. This is why we don't do it. Your tummy? I know you don't want bugs in your tummy. You want bugs in your tummy? You want to feed parasites at night? No, do you? No? Okay, let's not do that anymore. That's gross. That's gross. Just talk them out of it. Put a hard stop to food. Aim for consuming bed. I mean, it's so important. I mean, in order to be done eating by 6 p.m., you actually have to make sure you've cooked, started cooking at 4.30, or you have your, your meal pre-prepped, you know? So much easier when you think about dinner in the morning because you can have whatever you need defrosted or cooked or pre-done or eat leftovers, or you can run out and grab something, grab a chicken from Whole Foods and roast some veggies. Like, it's so much better for me personally if I have that meal prepped and ready to go so that I can actually eat and have it done by 6 p.m. That's it. If you get desperate, if you get desperate, you're like, I'm dying, I didn't get a chance to eat dinner, I'm starving, do something simple. A protein shake, have a protein shake. It's easy to digest. Have something with vital proteins, a shake with vital proteins, blended, easy. Don't eat something heavy if it's late. Um, it's evening self-care bringing yourself down because sleep is the other most important thing for your body. Sleep, so important. Deep, hard REM sleep. Um, it's so important, it's not even funny. So much happens when you're sleeping. So much vital, important things happen when you're sleeping and you need to give yourself enough time to get there and to get enough of that deep sleep. So I'm gonna show you a couple things that can be helpful for sleep. And also just a couple of things that are good in a nighttime routine, telling your brain, hey, sleep is gonna be coming. You know, what do I do first? Um, for one, I like to bring the lights down because too much blue light, too much LED is, is flashing in the brain before bed. It won't let your brain get into that deep REM sleep. So as you can see behind me, I have some Himalayan salt lamps that I like to light the room with at night. I don't have my big LED lights on overhead in the evening. I like to dim everything down and make it darker so that you're not seeing that blue light. Also, TV an hour before bed is kind of a no-no. You're gonna have that bright light going on. If you plan on watching TV before bed, you can get those pixel glasses. They're glasses with a yellow hue to them because it filters out blue. Um, there's all kinds of different glasses. They make stylish ones. I think the company is called Pixel. These that make glasses that are for looking at computer screens that draw out the blue. You're not having so much issues with that deep REM sleep, but I like to use like Himalayan salt lamps and things like that. But I also like to have something being diffused that helps calm the nervous system. So my favorite blend for calming the nervous system, um, there are companies that have blends in the description box, but I like to make my own personally. And I do Sweet Orange. These are all from Florahana. Um, Sweet Orange Lavender Super, Lavender Super, which is a lavender. It's less expensive and it's amazing. Tansy. Blue Tansy is an expensive one. This little bottle is like 30 bucks, but you only need two drops. So I do five drops of each of these 
and one to two drops of blue tansy. Um, blue tansy really calms the nervous system down. It's like involuntarily calming your nervous system. Same with lavender. Lavender super is just amazing at just calming you down, but it's also, if it becomes a nighttime routine, your body's like, okay, I'm gonna be sleeping soon. Self care checklist. It's like, okay, night is coming. Start by dimming the lights, then the essential oils, and then um, some people, you know, they like to do a sleep. I like to do personally. Um, so one is CBD. I love the CBD more than life. It's called Cannabrix CBD. It's the raw one. And it has a teeny tiny bit of agave in it. But I take two milligrams, which is a third of a serving. I take two milligrams. And this gives me the deepest sleep. Like sometimes... It helps me, it not only helps me get to sleep, but it helps me get deep sleep. So like I'll pass out after I take this and I'll wake up like, you know, I'll go to sleep at like 9.30 and then I'll wake up at one thinking it's like four in the morning. Like I must have slept all night. I felt like I slept so deep. And I'm like, I look and I'm like, oh my gosh, I slept like five hours of sleepless. This is amazing. Um, I started taking this. I give this to my kids if they get a cough and they need to get knocked out. I, I give it to them if they're too wound up. This is completely CBD and no THC, so it's safe for children. Um, and I'm giving them, I actually give them about 1.5 milligrams, which is just a tiny amount. Um, but it's water soluble, so it dissolves in water. So it uh, act, it's very easy for your body to use it right away. Some of them are oils and like MCT oils, so it takes take a little bit longer for the body to be able to use them because this one's water soluble, which there's not a lot out there that are water soluble. That's why I just love this one. And I've used so many expensive ones. I've used like seven or eight different kinds of CBD before. This one by far is the best I've ever used. I noticed the biggest difference. I can take this if my mind is just being overactive, kind of for anxiety. I can take it during the day if I just need a tiny amount just to kind of chill out. This has been the best CBD I've ever used in my life. And it's Cannabrix and I sell it. Um, you can also get it on their website. Um, and and weed shops <laughs> but it is absolutely phenomenal like i said thc free no hallucinating or anything like that great um most people are magnesium deficient make your nice natural calm drink at night um this is a new product that they have called calm calm full sleep uh this one i would say uh take the regular uh natural calm as much as possible and then when you need a little extra take this one because that has a little bit of melatonin a little l-theanine no it has gaba GABA, L-theanine, and melatonin. So um, it's one rounded teaspoon, but I only take like third of a teaspoon to half, and it also helps me with sleep. There's nothing that helps me more than this, but if you just really, really need deep sleep and you're having a hard time falling asleep, getting to sleep, staying asleep, the combination of these two things are totally magical. Magical. And you'll notice you'll dream a lot more, um, and that's just because you're sleeping harder for longer periods of time. So you're not really dreaming more. You're just remembering them because you're out for so long. So nothing's giving you dreams. It's just because you're out harder for longer. So the combination of these two things are absolutely, absolutely amazing. Very important is nasal cleansing. And I do this because uh, when you sleep at night, uh, what happens is anything that gets trapped in here, if you're allergic to anything that gets trapped in there, I mean, think about it, you're breathing in your nostrils all day long. You have allergens, pollutants, mold, dust, all kinds of things trapped in your nose. I always like to get those rinsed out before I go to bed because I don't want my body, I don't, I don't want to end up with a sinus infection for one. I don't want to end up with, um, you know, swollen eyes in the morning because everything's traveled into my sinuses. I just, I don't want my body to have to do extra work at night. So nasal rinsing has become a part of my nighttime routine. So I keep both of these bottles in my shower because I always shower at night and I have Restore, uh, which is basically dirt water. It just rehydrates. It gives your your nose minerals that it needs and it flushes things out. So what I usually do is about, you know, four to five, four to five to six sprays in each side, blow out really good. And then I spray one spray up and sniff it up on each side. So I rotate between that and colloidal silver. Old and flu season, I switched the colloidal silver because I want it to kill all the bacteria and cycling through and out but I want to make sure I'm replenishing minerals and just rinsing as well so I go back and forth between the colloidal silver one here I carry this in my office and the restore I also carry this in my office um, these are absolute lifesavers don't wait until you have a sinus infection coming on like prevent it because you're gonna be breathing stuff in that's gonna get trapped in your nose that needs to be rinsed out so I have turned I have definitely incorporated this into my 
you know, healing roadmap. And that's why I like to talk about that. So other things you can do at night, you can do a massage with those relaxing body oils. So if you take just like a massage oil, this one's from Tropical Traditions. See if you can see it, it's so bright. Tropical Traditions, same company that sells these essential oils. I will put a link down because these are very, very affordable essential oils. This huge bottle of lavender, Lavendin Super, is like 16 bucks. It's humongous. It's ginormous, 50 grams, it's huge. It's twice the size of most big bottles. Um, same with the Sweet Orange, like $16 for this huge bottle of Sweet Orange. The Blue Tansy is 30 bucks, 30 bucks, $31 to like 60 or 70. So their prices are amazing. You get free shipping um, with the coupon code that I put in the description box. So if you don't know how to open the description box below, um, there's a teeny tiny little arrow right down. See this teeny tiny arrow? You could totally miss it, it's tiny. If you click on it, it will expand this underneath and it will give you all the links that you need here and you click it and it'll expand the box and give you all the links a lot of people don't know how to do that on their phone so it's very very important so i like to massage um especially in the shower so i'll take my it has co coconut oil macadamia oil jojoba oil and palm oil oil in it and then i'll put those oils i'll mix a couple drops of like the lavender or whatever in there and i'll massage it and i always in the in the shower massage my stomach clockwise and little circles to get the lymphatics going in my intestines before night because you know think about your intestines you know you don't always go in and get in there and massage everything and keep everything flowing and moving making sure everything's not kinked i do big stretches in the shower and make sure i go in circles and just always you know be mindful of your intestines and getting things moving you're going to drink some water at night cool that's the other thing you're going to drink water every evening so you're front loading your water in the morning and night. So about an hour after dinner, you're gonna wanna make sure you get down at least one of these, 24 to 40 ounces of water an hour after dinner, from then until you go to bed. It's okay. A couple of those nights you'll get up to pee. Your body's gonna get used to it. You'll probably pee really big right before bed, but you wanna get that water down, you know why? Because at night, all of your ligaments, your joints that have been smushed all day long from all that movement, all that walking, all that stuff, this is their time to puff back up. But guess what happens? If you don't facilitate enough hydration, when they puff back up, they're gonna be loaded with recycled toxins. What is that gonna cause? Mm, arthritis, joint pain, all that kind of stuff. Do you want that? No, I promise you don't. So give it fresh water to rehydrate all the joints, the ligaments, your spine. You want fresh water to get those toxins out. And so that when you rehydrate it and it puffs back up, you make sure that it's full of clean water. So you're not having those joint pains and things like that. You can just wash through those things. I absolutely love, there's a couple journals that I use. I absolutely love the five minute journal. Looks like this. Five minute journal is great because it's a really quick, literally, it doesn't really even take five minutes. So it has a nighttime routine, three amazing things that happened today, and your diet on positivity, always. So three things that happened today and how could you have made today better? If you're thinking about how you could have made today better before you go to bed, you're gonna be thinking about what you can do tomorrow. Like that, what you could have done today to make it better probably is gonna to apply to tomorrow. So when you wake up in the morning, it has what I'm grateful for, what can make today great, and your daily affirmation with obviously goes along with the first step of the healing roadmap. So that's why the five minute journal works so well for my roadmap. Scientifically, this is proven. Go on the five minute journal's website and look at it. Like it is scientifically proven to make your life better. It's really fun to look at the research and they talk about it at the beginning of the five minute journal. But um, I have noticed just an amazing change in how you feel when you think positively, when you are day planning, when you're doing those things. Now this isn't your day planner. This sits by your bed. You spend, you know, three to five minutes on it in the morning, if that, but you make sure you have, you wake up early enough to do that. So whether you wanna do this in the morning or at night. Um, I have the passion planner, and this is more of your day-to-day -day planner that stays with you. It goes in your purse, you're writing in it. Um, it has a passion plan. So it has like you looking farther out in the future. What goals do you wanna achieve? What steps you take to get there? Um, it has like your day, your week, like what you ate, how, what you worked out. Like this is your like monthly reflections. Like, I mean, this is an amazing, amazing planner. And 
this is where you're planning out things a little bit more on a day-to-day -day basis and like you can plan out your whole days Monday through Friday what you're doing every single hour um, personal to-do list priorities work um, space of infinite possibility where you can sit and just think you know um, these types of things are so important in the evening in the morning you don't even understand you never want to get into your day without knowing what's going on all day long you know it's like hopping into the hamster reel, wheel instead of getting on your path you always want to be on your path don't get caught on the hamster wheel if you get caught on the hamster wheel what's gonna happen you're gonna be on Instagram scrolling because you don't even know what you need to do you're like yeah what's going on yeah I'm on Instagram oh you're gonna be sitting on social media oh I think I'm gonna look at Facebook I don't know what I'm supposed to do today so I'll just get on the hamster wheel and just just scroll just look at stuff you know it's like I have you don't know what you're gonna do then you're gonna find you're gonna find yourself on the hamster wheel so it's so so important to plan morning and evening but now they're saying the science is proving that planning your day the night before is more important than doing the morning up but the positivity and the affirmations that's definitely in the morning so um, another thing is to avoid electronics in your sleep space because they actually mess with the uh, vibrational energies and things like that if you have electromagnetic things charging near you I always charge my cell phone so my beds here I always charge my cell phone in my bathroom way away from me and it's always on airplane mode and anything next to my bed um, like if I have a diffuser going it doesn't matter because I sleep on an earthing mat so all the electricity gets sucked out of my body um, but I don't want anything transmitting anywhere near my body because I don't want anything to mess with my sleep frequencies bring your brain down so you're not thinking so much a lot of the stuff that you would be thinking about you got out because you already journaled it you already wrote it down those are the things you've worked those out but if if you're still having issues sleeping with all of that you're like I took my CBD I did my journaling um, an amazing thing is called headspace now this is an app that you can get on your phone and the app is free it comes with 10 sessions so it talks you through a way of thinking that makes your mind so tired that you just pass out I'm telling you it works it's crazy so it'll be like lay down how does your body feel from head to toe think about what happened today think about this think about that it's just a way of guided thinking about your body thinking about your thoughts that makes you exhausted and you pass out and it's amazing and the guy has this British voice and it's amazing and it sounds great and it's like it's not weird um, and you have 10 sessions that you can use as long as you want you can flip through the 10 go through it 10 in order and do it all over do it all over or you can subscribe and actually pay like a monthly or yearly fee and get new sessions and it knocks them out I'll go in there and listen to headspace with them you know totally not tired at all and my husband has to drag me out because I'm drooling and sleeping like it is so amazing so just um, bringing down your thought activity you know getting rid of that um, nervousness insomnia and listening to headspace to bring everything down so you're getting that good hard sleep what feels better than when you just sleep so good at night like you actually aim at going to bed earlier and you sleep so good and hard and then you can like start your day but not only start your day on the right foot but you already have your day planned ahead of you have your eye on the prize to have a goal to know what is going on throughout the day before you jump into the day because then things just end up being a mess and we don't want that because that creates stress fear chaos and that all leads to toxins that your body's going to produce and cause issues with your body and we're trying to avoid that so that's why in a uh, functional way um, all of these little things that don't seem like they could be a big deal become a big deal because they're causing toxic stress triggers so that's why I include those kind of things in my healing roadmap and you know the evening wind down time and even on here on the the evening self-care list it's just sip on the 32 to 48 ounces of water starting an hour after dinner give yourself 30 minutes to an hour of wind down time that includes deep breathing gratitude journal five minute journal what you're doing the next day include a shopping list doing a sleep tea doing relaxing essential oils like lavender and blue tansy avoiding electronics in your sleep space and trying headspace for guided meditation I try to keep it really super simple so that like you can memorize these things and then all you're doing is looking at your roadmap um, for reminders so you're like oh I already know all the lymphatic drainage things I know I need to, I need just need the reminder that I have to do them so this is the roadmap that you look at every day I flashed pictures of all of these slides and then on the roadmap if you do decide to purchase it now um, I put this together for purchase for people that can't afford it I that's why I made this video so that like you you know can see what you need to do and you can just take notes um, 
And the reason I sell this is because it cost me a lot to make it. <laughs> so I had to hire the person to design it and everything like that. Um, you get the roadmap emailed to you for $25. So you get the roadmap, you get the slides that came that I flashed on the screen for each thing as the reminders. Um, you get my favorite recipe, um, peach mango apple cider vinegar lemonade that tastes amazing with all the pictures of the products on there. You get a typical day of healthy eating. So um, what a typical day for me looks like for healthy eating, um, including taking your apple cider vinegar drink and taking your supplements and some a couple recipes for healthy smoothies that I like using like the Pure Paleo product, um, what snacks look like lunch, and um, you also get the PDF, which is free on my website. I just email that to everybody as well in the roadmap to help things. So you get all of that emailed to you. And if you're in my office and you're coming for a visit, you also get all those things. It's so amazing. I had to raise my prices slightly, so you're actually paying for it, but um, you're also getting all those things because I just know that it is so helpful for people to know all of these things. It's so, so super important. My Roadmap to Health, if you'd like to purchase one, and, and by supporting me, you are supporting the creation of my healing center. So my goal, like in my passion plan, is to have a healing center where people can come and it's almost like a day spa. It's relaxing and you can have healing modalities done. You can have food testing done. You can go and have reflexology. You can get hyperbaric oxygen chamber treatments. You can have, um, come in and pick up food preps. You can have a juice, you can have bone broth. It's a place where you can go just to get loved and cared on if you just can't take care of yourself. Hopefully have little guest houses where if people have to fly out and they need to be cared for, um, where they can have food and relaxation and a place where they can just be restored because I know so many people like not only are they sick but their kids are sick and they can't care for themselves or their kids or they don't know how to so they need to fly out or come out and stay on the property and and get training on how to cook healthy and how to cook healing and um, but at the same time be relaxed and restored and this is I just want it to be like the safe refuge that people can go to and that is my big picture so um, by buying your roadmap to health you're helping facilitate that because I am trying to raise money to do that so I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this is informative for you. I hope that it, if there was like a little puzzle piece missing in your health routine, that you were able to pull something from this that you can incorporate. And it doesn't seem that the, that they don't seem unattainable. Like, but just practice these things. And say, um, Dr. Caroline Leaf says it takes 21 days for your brain to make the change. 21 days. So if you do anything for 21 days, it becomes a habit. So I highly, highly suggest that you turn these practices into habits and that the roadmap, print this off, that the roadmap will help. And like I said, I only charge 25 bucks for this and I email it to you within 24 hours, hopefully, usually within the hour or so. If I see the email pop up, I get an email to you right away. And I hope you guys all have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for watching and be healthy. Oh, make sure you like, subscribe, and comment below too, because you love me. Do it now, actually.